So, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we've been talking about the contrast. And this is so funny. Uh, when I, I got home a little late today and sat down to eat dinner and, and, and God changed everything. He says, uh, I want you to deal with the contrast and this difference between, listen to this now, eating a regular meal and communion. Uh, what? He said there's still a lot of people going around and say that many are sick and many die early deaths because of communion. And the real contrast here is you are not to look at communion like a regular meal. And if you keep looking at communion like it's something to satisfy your hunger and not recognize what it's really about, then you'll continue to be sick and you will die early. Not because you took communion, but because you didn't take advantage of deliverance that has been provided to you through, through the communion that's given to you by grace. And I'm going to show you that tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now, this is not very popular, what I'm about to show you, because I promise you almost every preacher I know still tells people, be careful that you don't take communion with sin in your life, because if you take communion with sin in your life, it could make you sick and you could die early. That is not even the nature of God. And how is it that so many are stuck there? Because they didn't make the contrast between the law that came by Moses and the grace that came by Jesus Christ. Let's uh, back up a little bit so I can set the, uh, uh, the plate for you. Verse 20, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 20. He says, when you come together, therefore, into one place. Now, notice how this starts. When you come together into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Now, why would he say that? When you come together into one place, it's not to eat the Lord's Supper. The implication you'll see is not to eat the Lord's Supper like you would eat your dinner or your lunch. Next verse, 21. For in eating, everyone taketh before others his own supper. One is hungry and another is drunken. Can you see what he's talking about? He's talking about the regular way we consume a meal <laughs> versus this communion. All right, look at the next verse. Uh, let me say this before I go on. Say this out loud with me. Context is king. Context is king. You don't have to look up the Greek form of a word or the Webster's definition. All you have to do is back up enough to gain the context of how a scripture appears. Uh, the application of any scripture is going to be based on the context that you find the scripture in. Ignore the context and you most likely will come up with an incorrect meaning of that particular scripture. All right, now watch this. He says, what? Have you not houses to eat your meal and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? He says, I praise you not. We're not talking about, you know, your food and drink that you have at home over your meal or your supper. 23. For I have received of the Lord, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. Now, this is awesome. So we're not talking about your suffer. We're talking about what I've received of the Lord. And now I'm getting ready to deliver what I've received of the Lord to you. Glory to God, hold my muse so I don't shout, tell up some here tonight. <laughs> Couldn't even eat my asparagus after I saw this. I was sitting there eating my chicken and I looked at that and I'm like, mm, praise God. Now watch this. Here's what I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, what did he do when he was betrayed? Watch this. He took bread. Hmm. Verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread. And here's what he said. Take. Eat. This bread is my body. So no longer are we just talking about bread you eat at supper. 
But now Jesus has taken this bread and said, this bread is my body. I broke it for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Do what in remembrance of you? Remember in this communion that this bread represents my broken body. This bread represents my body that was broken for you so that any area of your life that is broken, remember my body, this bread was broken for you. Oh, praise God. And then he said, do this in remembrance of me. First time you see it. Now look at the next verse. He said, after the same manner also he took the cup, same way, when he had supped, saying, now this cup is no longer Kool-Aid to help wash down the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. This cup is now the New Testament, the New Covenant. This is now the covenant of grace. This is now the New Testament. This is now the New Testament that just requires you to believe and no longer requires your performance. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. And in this New Testament, you're already healed. You're already delivered. In this New Testament, you already have victory. In this New Testament, you're not coming from defeat trying to get victory. In this New Testament, you're coming from victory to victory. In this New Testament, you were forgiven of all of your sins, known, unknown. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? You were just forgiven for all of them. Past, present, future. Ones you know and ones you don't know. You're forgiven of all of them. This blood represents everything that we've been talking about. And Jesus said, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, so far, have you heard anything about, now, before you take the bread and before you drink the cup, remember your sins or you're going to die? He didn't say remember your sins. He said remember him. That's right. Did he, did he say, when you take the bread and when you take the cup, remember your sins now. Remember your sins now. No, he didn't. He said, remember me. Remember that my body was broken so that wherever you're broken, you can be made whole, peace, sound. Remember when you take this cup, you are drinking the new covenant. Remember it. Remember what I did. Remember because of what I did and the sacrifice of my body and, and the sacrifice of my blood, remind yourself of where you are right now and where you are no longer. Remember. Amen. All right, now watch this. Verse 26. For as often as you eat this bread, which is his body, broken body, which is a final sacrifice for all your sins, and as often as you drink this cup, which is the New Testament in his blood, he says what you're doing is you're showing the Lord's death until he comes. Another translation says you're announcing the Lord's death until he shows up. I said, now, what, what, why we want to announce your death? He said, remember, he said the testator who left a will and a testament, it's not yours until he dies. If I wrote a will, a last will, it's not enforced until the writer of the will dies and then that will is enforced. So it says every time you take this communion, you are announcing the death of Jesus Christ and that the will is now enforced. I'm announcing to you that I am the healed, protecting my health. I'm announcing to you that I have victory. I'm announcing to you that I'm whole and I'm delivered. I'm announcing to you that all my sins have been taken away, past, present, and future. I'm announcing to you that Jesus' is death, he died, praise God, which means that, I, that that will has now been enforced into my life. And I'm, I'm, I'm making that announcement every time I take the communion. I'm making the announcement, he died. Yeah. <laughs> Hebrews, I believe, chapter 9 says, without the death of the testator, the New Testament is alive now because he died. So this is not lunch and supper as you know it. 
Now watch this. Next verse. Wherefore, whoso shall, whosoever shall eat this bread, now listen to what we just said, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how would I drink and eat unworthily? By drinking and eating it as if it's a normal meal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By drinking and eating it and not understanding and recognizing what this stands for that when I eat and drink of the cup and the bread and I think it was a snack instead of the body and the blood that caused and enforced the New Testament, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking it unworthily. Why? He didn't say you were unworthy. He said because you're not recognizing what you're doing, you're doing it unworthily, or watch this, you're doing it without benefiting from the power of it. Hmm. Look at the next verse. Man, I love Wednesday night. I ain't laid no foundation or nothing. I just came out here and just wham, and y'all done bring it on, man. Yeah. <laughs> now watch this. But let a man examine himself. Now, now stop. Context is king, right? Is he asking you to examine yourself to see if you have sin in your life? Or is he asking you to examine yourself to see if you are recognizing the meaning and the purpose of what you're doing? Let a man examine himself to make sure he's just not taking this as a common meal. The reason why it's referred to as holy communion is because this is a meal that is opposite and sanctified and separated from all other meals. Because this one means something. This one means wholeness in my, in my life. This one means a New Testament enacted and activated in my life. So let me examine myself to make sure that I am focused in on the bread that represents his broken body and the cup that represents the blood of the New Testament. Examine yourself. Make sure you're focused on the sanctification and holiness of this meal. And what does it mean to be holy? That I am, I am not common with the world. I have been set aside. When they're broke, I'm supplied. When they're sick, I'm healed. When they're down, I'm full of joy. That's, that's what it means to be holy. The holy communion means not like or common to all other meals. <laughs> now, watch this. So you're examining yourself, not to see if you have sin. Dear God, if we examined ourselves to see if we have sin, they no, nobody would take communion. <laughs> Because whatever's done out of faith is sin. To know to do good and to do it not is sin. <laughs> All right, well, watch this now. Next verse, 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, he's drinking and eating this as if it's a lunch or a supper and not drinking and eating it knowing the authority and the power that has been invested in the broken bread that says, this is my body, and the shed blood that says, this is the New Testament in my blood. For he eateth and drinketh unworthily, and he eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. When you talk, the word discern means not recognizing the distinction and the difference. Damnation, what does that mean, going to hell? No, that means you are stopping up the benefits from coming by focusing in on what this means. You're stopping it. You're drinking of the, of the cup and eating of the bread, not focused in on what it means 
And so you're eating and drinking damnation to yourself. In other words, you're not benefiting yourself because you're not focused in on what it needs. And the reason why you're not benefiting yourself is because you have not mentally mentally made the distinction and the difference between this communion meal and your supper. Right. Good. <laughs> you see that? Now watch this. Next, next verse. For this cause, for what cause? For this cause, for the cause of you not making the distinction and the difference in your head that this is not your six o'clock meal, but this is the communion that has been set aside to release power and authority in your life. For this cause, many are, watch this, and here's, they translate this, they left off a couple of little helpful words. For this cause, many are still weak and sickly among you. They were weak and sick before they took the communion. And for this cause, they're still weak and sickly among you, and many die early deaths, not because of the communion, but because when they were sick and weak, they did not recognize the power and authority that God had graced and given to them so that by receiving his broken body, that wherever they were weak, they could be made whole. And by drinking of his cup and realizing what the blood of the New Testament is, that they would have life and have it eternally. And they did not. So they continued to be sick and they continued to, to be weak and they died early death because they carried around the sickness and the disease and the cancer and they trusted everything else but they did not trust nor did they make a distinction or the difference between this meal of the broken body and blood of Jesus and the rest of them so there is so much power invested in communion I know I did it I got diagnosed with cancer, and I remembered I have, give, I have been given authority, the grace of God. God graced me with this authority to use this authority. It's his power, but I got to turn the switch on. Y'all want to hear what I'm saying? And this goes along what we're going to talk about tonight, about performance-based versus things you have to perform. It's God's power, but I got to turn the switch on. Uh, Georgia Power sends the power to your house. But if you don't turn the switch on, you're not going to have no light in your room. It's their power, but you got to turn the switch on. It's God's power, but I got to turn the switch on. Here's another illustration. He says, um, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and the devil will, will flee from you. The word resist means to, to actively fight against. If I don't actively fight against the devil and resist him, he won't flee. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, well, well, you're doing something there. You're right. The authority is something that God graced you with. So now that you have been graced with the authority, you have to activate what you've been graced with. And we confuse that with performance-based religion versus the performance necessary to activate your spiritual authority. Amen. If you don't resist the devil, he won't flee from you. If you don't flip the switch, even though the power has been made available, God's power has been made available to you, and if you don't, if you don't, if you don't do and activate it, it won't be made available to you. And that's the fuss people have. Well, you're telling people they don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do nothing to be, you don't have to do nothing to try to earn your salvation, your righteousness, your wisdom, your deliverance. Jesus did all of the work there. All you got to do is believe there. But when it comes to your spiritual authority, you have to activate it. And God will not violate his word and come and turn the switch on for you. You have been given the authority and the right to flip the switch. And if you don't turn it on, nothing won't happen. That's where the big argument is. Well, he says you're not supposed to do nothing now that you're under grace. You're confusing performance-based religion under the law versus activating the authority that has been given to you through the grace of God, to walk in the authority as if you were God on the planet. You're not God, but he gave you the authority to act like you are by casting out devils, laying hands on the sick, raising the dead, for whatever you have, whatever you say you have. That's another piece of the authority about Proverbs um, uh, 18 and, and something. He said this, he says, uh, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So if you don't become a custodian of what comes out of your mouth, 
which is why God hates complaining so much because your mouth's so powerful, you're actually stopping what he wants to happen because you don't know how to speak right. When you got to watch what you say, when it comes to operating and activating your authority, you do. What about your righteousness? No, Jesus did that. That just requires my belief. Casting out devils? Well, I got to activate that. Being free from devils? I'm, I, all I got to do is believe that. <laughs> I know I must be like freaking out. I'm going a I'm thousand miles a minute, praise God, watching my clock, determined to be all of these places at one time. And bless God, I'm loving every minute of it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm so stirred up, praise God. I got the devil so freaked out, he don't know what in the world. The only thing he can do, a little bit of stuff, the only thing he can do uh, is to turn my, they turned my, my gas off. Last week, and I'm calling, did the gas bill get paid? I said, my, 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 is, this, is this it? This is the first time in my life I don't I get my gas turned off because I didn't pay my gas bill. Turned them on, they said, well, ain't no sign of nobody switching it off. I said, was the bill paid? Well, the bill's paid. I said, well, how come I ain't got no gas? Well, let me come out there and look at it. And he came and looked, and he went out and checked, and then he came back. He said, um, this ain't never happened before, but somebody, one of your neighbors didn't pay their gas, <laughs> and they switched yours off instead of theirs. And I said, Satan, I don't sweat the small stuff. Hallelujah, I got you. I got you. Just, you just. <laughs> oh, that ain't nothing. Then I go to bed, and the next morning I wake up, I'm getting ready to walk out the door, and the alarm goes off. Carbon monoxide in the laundry room. Carbon monoxide in the laundry room. Well, I, you know, that goes straight through the alarm, and uh, the fire trucks and, and police and, and oh, uh, <laughs> firemen going in my house with axes. I'm thinking, are they going to put a hole in my wall? Because I wanted to say, sir, could you please take them books off? I just, I just want to finish sweeping. They said, oh, it's false alarm. You don't have no carbon monoxide. Well, I could have told you that. I said, devil, is that all you got? You know, you got, you think I'm going to stop preaching the gospel of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ because two or three people say they don't like me. I'm, do you understand? Do you understand your trial has become my protein bar? It's what I eat for nourishment now. Your, your, your junk has, is what I now use for nourishment. I used to use them as barbells. Now I use, use them for nourishment, praise God. Bring it on, praise God. And I'm trying to get some of you stirred up to let you know you're not going to just sit around and be defeated by the devil and keep feeding on all of this bad doubt and unbelief, praise God. The gospel is being preached. The truth has come. You're under the grace of God Almighty, and it's time to rejoice and thank God for it. Well, shout amen, somebody. Let's give God praise for it. Amen. Now, I just had to get that out of me. Woo! Glory to God. What you say? Man, I've been on, I've been on just, just fifth gear for just, just my hair on fire right now. Just, in fact, I hadn't got a haircut. I thought I'd just let it grow so you can see the fire. Somebody said, ain't fire, that's die. No. Uh. Now watch this. For this cause, many are weak and sickly. For what cause? For the cause of not mentally making a distinction and a difference in your mind that this communion is not like the fried chicken supper. It's been marked and designated. Bread that is his body broken for you. That is his blood for the New Testament for you. Keep announcing that I died until I come. Keep announcing that I died until I come. He says, now many people don't know this difference in distinction, and many, many are weak, still weak, still sickly, and many die early deaths. Why? Because they had something available to heal them and to strengthen them, but they didn't know about it, and they thought it was a regular meal. They came to church, took a cracker. I mean, dear God, I was looking forward to that. When I was in the Baptist church, that wasn't no grapefruit. That was, we that was real nicely aged wine. 
you hold in your mouth just long enough <laughs> and just suck on it and gargle a little bit while the preaching is going on something else, you can start feeling kind of nice. <laughs> And the bread, the, my Baptist church was a, was a cracker. It, it wasn't the dry stuff we take with no taste. One day I'm going to come out here with some hot sauce and some uh, seasoned salt and put it on there. And I said, this bread, let me season it up a little bit. Listen, you can go home and do that with water and a piece of light bread. As long as you're designated. This is not bread from a sandwich. This is not bread from a supper. This bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you make the distinction and difference in your head. Uh, you, this is like a superpower weapon. There are two things that God gave us to help us in our grace lives. Tongues is one of them, and communion is the other. When I got that diagnosis of cancer in my body, I knew there's no way I am going to go through this without employing those two weapons. I took that communion, and I sat down, and I'd hold that bread up and say, now this bread is the broken body of Jesus Christ, which was broken for me so I can be made whole. I said, in Jesus' name, I now eat wholeness. And I can almost feel my, my body responding to to the bread, not the actual physical bread, but my designation that this is communion. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I took that cup, I think one night it was orange juice. I said, this cup tonight is the cup of the New Testament. That everything that Jesus has done, I believe I receive it right now. And I drink it, declaring that the New Testament is alive and well in me. And after I drink it, the only thing left to do is to praise and worship God. And then just give him praise. And I remember after, I, I did, I took it every day. Sometimes I would take it twice a day. When I took it this one day, I knew, I stood up out of that desk and I said, that's it. You know when an assurance comes over you, I don't care what they see or read. When something goes off on the inside of you that says, that's it, you cannot be defeated whether it's in business, whether it's in peace in your home, whether it's in your physical body, when the inner image of that covenant explodes on the inside of you and when you close your eyes, you see yourself healed, you see yourself delivered. I'm telling you, man, this thing is as real as the person you are seated by tonight. Glory be to God. Don't let this communion by. But go ahead and employ it. Go ahead and start using it. Using it where your situations, any situation is concerned. Any situation where you need wholeness and the release of the New Testament. Designate the Holy Communion. Set it aside all other meals and say, now I'm using this to announce that he died. And as a result, look at what I have enforced in my life by the grace of God. Man, I never heard this preach you know, to me before. And I'm, I'm making sure you don't stand up and say, you ain't never heard it before. You're here tonight. <laughs> now, I can't help for people who ain't here. Should have been here. <laughs> if I preached it one time, you get to heaven. Pastor ain't never preached that before, and I'm going to be right behind you. Use the lie. I did it on a Wednesday night. You didn't come. <laughs> All right, now watch this next verse. For if we would judge ourselves, what? What, you see? If we would judge ourselves where this is concerned, where the, where the worthiness of what we're eating has concerned, then we won't be judged because we didn't judge ourselves of recognizing that this meal is different from everyone. So, so judge yourself. Now am I focused in on what this means? Judge yourself. Well, do I understand that I'm getting ready to do this in remembrance of him? Context is king. You don't just take a scripture out of the Bible and ignore the context that it appeared in. The application of a scripture is based on the context that it is found in. So you, you can't go around the Bible and pick that one up, pick that one up, pick that one up, and ignore the context because the context defines the application of that scripture. Can't do it. Can't do it. You'll end up in error. 
cannot do it. You have to pay attention to the context and how that scripture is evolving and being used in that context. Say it again, context is king. Context is king. Verse 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened or what? Directed. That word chastened literally means to direct. Directed of the Lord. That we should not be condemned as if there is no use in our lives with this world. All right, now watch verse 33, going back to the, to the to contrast here. Wherefore, my brethren, when, when you come together to eat, now he's going back to the contrast between communion and the regular meals. So when you come together to eat, wait one for another. 34. And if any man hunger, watch this, let him eat at home. This is not what that is. If you're hungry, go home and eat a meal. Because this communion is not about your hunger. This communion is about your healing. This communion is about your deliverance. This communion is about your wholeness. This communion is about the New Testament in his blood. If any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation. All right? And he says, now, and the rest will I set in order when I come. So somebody start asking deep questions, say, the rest he'll set in order <laughs> when he comes. All I know is what he said. And the rest he will set in order when he comes. Now, I got something else out of this. It might not mean very much, but when you're at rest, things will be set in order. <laughs> and that's what communion did for me. It put me at rest. It was my, my medicine prescribed by Dr. Jesus. And although I would take the other things, I would not dare take those things and not take this thing because this thing became the support for all the other things that, uh, that I was taking. So you see the contrast now between, and I know it sounds weird, between supper and the communion table. You got it? Come on, lift your hands up and thank God for that. Just lift your hands up, lift them, lift them, lift them, lift them. Open your mouth and thank him. He was saying something to you. He was saying something to you. What was he saying to you? What was he saying to you? Thank him. Thank him for something that he's already done. Thank him for something that he is doing. Thank him for something that he will do. Oh, my God. Thank him for that communion. Thank you for the authority that we've been given through the communion table. See yourself activating this communion in your life. See yourself taking it more than just at church on Sundays. Focus in on it. Understand it. Take it worthily. Examine yourself. Make the distinction. And reap the benefits of his broken body and his shed blood. You will not be defeated. You will not stay weak. And you will not stay sick. And you will not die before your time because of what's been invested in the communion. I, I'm telling y'all, something about this communion. Ken, where is that at in the book of John where he talks about the communion again? He, talk, he speaks about it in the book of John where... Yeah, he, he, was, he was talking. Let me see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Put your hands together and give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Yeah, that's it. You remember when Jesus spoke to his disciples? And he said, drink my blood and eat my flesh. And all of them left the church because they had no idea what he was talking about. They thought he was talking about literally eating his flesh. 
literally drinking his blood. And he said, if you don't do this, you can have no part with me. Right. All that he has, this thing is more serious than we thought. I may continue on a little bit more because the book of John begins to speak even more detail about it. Start doing this at home. Start doing this when situations come up. Hold your emotions and say, come on, honey, let's take communion. Don't let fear proceed or take the place of the power that you have in communion. Keep up with it and start recording your successes instead of your failures. Start recording your healings. Start recording your deliverances. And then back up a little bit and say, oh, I get it. Jesus left this for me to do. I'm going to do it. Amen. Amen. Let's receive our offering tonight. Amen. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hands, and the ushers will be more than happy to, to serve you guys. Man, the crew, the crew, the crew, the crew. Where can I go in the world and do what I did tonight? And I mean, if I, if I, I'm telling you, if I'd have went in some services and did this tonight, the, half the congregation would have been looking at me like, what is he talking about? But, you know, here, you got to catch it or get or stay lost. <laughs> the crew, we got to go. We got to come here and eat this food, and then we got to go and practice it and do what we got to do with it, man. I so appreciate you guys taking the time out every Wednesday night to show up here. Those of you who are online, you, you guys don't understand. They're, they're folks that are, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, and they're, they stay up every Wednesday and late so they can get a hold of the stream and be a part of what we're doing here. Uh, uh, tonight, and, and I don't ever want you to have to waste your time that when you decide to come here for Bible study, rush here from work, sit in the traffic, hadn't eat, just eating some pecans on the way here and all that kind of stuff, man, I want to make sure it's worth your drive, and I believe that a church alive is, is worth the drive, amen? It, I believe it's worth the drive, amen? Hold your offerings up. Father, we declare in the name of Jesus that we are giving this in honor. We're giving this from a cheerful heart, our hearts and our giving. And we praise you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's just go ahead and receive the offering. Uh, I'm out. Later. Can y'all? Okay. All right. Praise God. I say I know my mouth big enough. You all can hear me. But amen. Um, have we had the opportunity? We passed the buckets. We're all good. Praise God. Well, listen, if you haven't received Jesus as Lord and Savior, we always want to extend that to you. If you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that's the other thing Pastor was talking about as far as that grace gift and that being made available to you. You want to take advantage of everything that God has available for you. So we want to make that available for you tonight. And lastly, if you want to become a member, if you believe that God has called you here, I'm telling you, of course I'm biased, but uh, this is the best church and the greatest church in the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. So listen, everybody wants to be with the best, so go ahead on and come on. If you believe God has called you here, come on and join up with us. We got a work to do. And we're saving souls, we're changing lives, we're empowered by grace, we understand it. Hey, this is the place to be. So everybody, if you would, stand up, turn to your left, right, front, behind, and minister those three things to those who are around you. If they want to come down, bring them down in Jesus' name.
praise God. Come on down. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. We got time. Amen. Praise God. If moving a little slow, we close it out. But if I see you moving, we're going to stop it. Amen. Get you the opportunity to come on down. But let's give God praise for the, this gentleman who came down, responded to the word. Praise God. If any, any of the other locations, if any of you all have come down, of course, we have prayer people there who will assist you and make sure you get exactly what you came down for. Let's stretch forth our hands and pray for. Father, we thank you for uh, this brother and all of those who have responded in other locations and even online. Father, we thank you that you, being the faithful God that you are, will make sure that they get exactly what they came down for. Thank you, Father, that their needs will be met. Father, that they lack nothing, that they have all sufficiency in all things. Things, and we believe that in spiritual things as well as physical things. So we thank you, Father, that you're taking them from faith to faith and from glory to glory into your dear uh, uh, grace for their lives. And we give you thanks and praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. All right. Well, listen, powerful word. Uh, uh, if you would, follow our deacons here and go on up to the prayer room. They'll make sure you get exactly what you came down for. Powerful word tonight. Go home, meditate on this. Listen, we are not a, we're not a one-hit wonder. So, uh, <laughs> praise God. Let's give God praise for, amen. Praise God for another. <laughs> now I'm like, you know what? I probably should have just, we could have just kept on singing for a minute. Amen. We're good. We're good. We're, this is not a one-hit wonder kind of message. Make sure you get the CDs, the DVDs, whatever it is, the MP3s. Listen to this over and over again because he said something powerful tonight. He was talking about how we do this in remembrance of Jesus and remembering when Jesus died, the new covenant was implemented. When the new covenant was implemented, all these rights, all these authorities that we have, we now can operate in these. So when you take, a, when you take communion now, man, you ought to see yourself as, as if, uh, who's, who's that, uh, like underdog when he takes his little doggy treats or, you know, <laughs> that wasn't a good example. But anyway, you get in. <laughs> But you're getting built up and, and strong in the Lord as you already are. So just remember that. Go back, study your notes, get the message, get this down to your spirit, and become world changers. Amen? Lift your hands. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Great grace be upon you. Thank you, Lord, for the knowledge of communion, and we will walk in it. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. God bless you. Have a good night. Are you ready for the 2019 Change Experience? Join Creflo and Taffy Dollar for one day only. But you ain't got to work to be righteous no more. That was your inheritance. Redemption is your inheritance. Prosperity is your inheritance. Peace is your inheritance. It is your inheritance. Jesus has died. So by right, you can get everything now, and he is here to make sure that he executes. Session times will be at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. Join us June 7th at the Columbia Convention Center. For more information on how to register, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. We can't wait to see you there. Do you love church but can't make Sunday service? Or do you desire a more intimate worship experience? Join us Saturday nights at World Changers Church International. Engage in anointed praise and worship, fellowship, and receive a grace-filled word. The dress is casual, the atmosphere is anointed. Doors open at 5 p.m., the experience begins at 6 p.m., Saturday night at World Changers Church International.